How are you feeling, John? Free landing. <laughs> Bit of wind, here we go. We're Vans Without Borders, which is three British lads in a transit van. So we have John. Hey. I'm Jack. And in the back we have Fenton. Hello. Fenton's actually come out after he's seen the last sun piece that they did in us. So thank you very much, guys, for helping us find new team members. Oh, Dead Russian uh, gear here. Clear. This blows up as we move it gets it. This is inside a Russian tank. There's not a lot of room in there, but it's up, it's up the big machine, is there? So I'm, I'm here, <laughs> you can see, you know, it's, it's a two man tank and it's absolutely tiny. They seem to have cleared off with anything of value before they left. That's where they would load the shells to shoot. So far we've been all over Ukraine, from Lviv to Kiev to Kharkiv to Chernihiv, Bucha, Irpin, Zitomir, you know, you name it, we've been there, dropping off essential aid and we've helped thousands of people since coming here three weeks ago. This is something we found quite common that the Russians do as they come through and devastate an area. So on Monday we delivered almost £6,000 worth of aid to Chernihiv a region 20 kilometers from the Belarusian border, which was devastated in the initial Russian assault on Ukraine by tanks, artillery, missiles, even their local supermarkets were all bombed to smithereens. People's houses were bulldozed. There's no electricity, there's no water, there's no heating. It's, it's a very dire situation and the people are extremely desperate. This is a civilian area that's just been completely bombed. Chernihiv is also quite hard to reach because the roads even before the war weren't particularly great. Lots of potholes and a lot of vehicles can't get through them. So it's not it's not easy for a lot of the international aid organizations to go there or it's maybe perhaps not Instagrammable. But we teamed up with the army. We explained to them we were in Chernihiv about a week before that. We saw how desperate the people were. We saw people fighting for food and we thought we've got to go back with something, something mega. So we had our van, we had a local priest van, and we teamed up with Obolon region, which is a territorial army brigade in Kiev, and they very kindly let us use one of their military vans, which we filled up with tons of aid. And we had to pull over at one point because we heard bullets being fired around us, and we're still unsure what that was. So we've been held up because there's gunfire. I don't think anyone's really sure what's going on on the way to Chernihiv. So we're quite close to the Belarusian border at the moment. And it's, you know, there's massive traffic build up. But again, life goes on as normal. No one seems overly concerned because it's part of everyday life now. It's a tragedy. But we managed to get into Chernihiv and it was a bit of a baptism of fire for our new recruit Fenton. It was his first first operation with us and it was it was good. We gave out all, all of the food, so thousands of tins of food, bread, shampoo, all the basic necessities we gave out and we helped at least a thousand if not more people. But sadly in one area, in one village in the centre of Chernihiv, it was it was it was shocking really. We we got swarmed by desperate people who started pulling boxes out of the van, um, pulling boxes out of the military van, wrestling with each other for food, shampoo. It's it's really hard to see. It's hard to see. You know, it's not, not something I think's really been seen before. Europeans, at least in modern history, Europeans squabbling and fighting for food. <laughs> Yeah, 
Расходитесь отсюда, пожалуйста. Закрывайте. 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 Actually, from that area, our military escort advised us we had to pull out, so we left some food on the side of the road for the locals to hopefully divvy up amongst themselves and got out there quick because we were told it wasn't safe for us to be there. Yeah, it's, we always knew this was an issue coming into Ukraine. Who's, aren't you scared of the Russians? Is like, well, it's, it's what it is. We understand the risk there, but I think one of the sad risks is there are some very desperate people. It was absolute carnage. Unfortunately, the people in Chernihiv were very desperate. We had to leave a location because we got swarmed by desperate elderly people who were grabbing things out of the van, um, trying to pull some of our workers and uh, volunteers out of the way. And we had an army escort with us and they advised us to pull out of the area or they couldn't guarantee our safety, which was you know, quite, quite sad. We did leave some food on the side of the road for people so they did have something in the area and we were able to help other villages around Chernihiv. But it's, it's the first time I think all of us have seen people in Europe that desperate. So you can see here where a tank's been blown up. Here. And part of the tank's blown over here as well. That was the force of the explosion. And you can see here where people are so desperate. Desperate for water. There's no running water in Chernihiv. They're tapping into trees to collect, collect water. They're using, using ancient techniques to, to survive. There's a veteran who have been you know, left destitute as a result of the Russian attacks on their homes in Chernihiv. Chernihiv is quite inaccessible by the road, so it means aid is struggles to reach them. So there's 5,400 pounds worth of aid. It's candles, shampoo, fish, bread, water, oats, rice, pasta, anything you can imagine we've given out today. We've helped hundreds of people, if not about a thousand. And you know, these people are extremely desperate. Their houses were devastated by Putin and the Russian army. And you know, it's just, it's a fantastic feeling to be able to help so many people and make a real difference to their quality of life. John. See, luckily we didn't give out all the boxes. Może nas zajętuje, pójdziemy za nim. You can see here that people aren't particularly wealthy either. You know, they live a simple life in the countryside. And Russian tanks have just driven through here and decimated it. You know, no apparent reason. Well, whoever did that to those trees then went and demolished a row of houses. You got mortar rounds there. And again, because there's no services, no rubbish collection, people have resorted to filling the mortar holes with their trash. Whole row of houses just destroyed. And why? So we've now, we've pretty much run out of food. It's quite sad, you know, we've given out three vans load of food and people keep coming. And you can see people are very visibly disappointed. We just simply don't have, have enough to, to keep up with the demand. You know, we've helped maybe over a thousand people. More people keep turning up and it's, 
It's sad. People have ridden down, but there's nothing left. We've given out thousands of tins of fish. It's tough. It's quite tough to see and shows that despite aid starting to appear in Ukraine, I think we did some amazing pioneering work, um, connecting groups throughout Ukraine and also encouraging international aid organizations to turn up in Ukraine. In fact, today we've just seen the first UN vehicle in the three weeks we've been here arrive in Venezia, which again is, I don't think it's an area that's been bombed and is relatively safe, life is as normal, and they finally decided to show up, so hats off to them. So we just dropped off about 5,400 pounds worth of humanitarian aid, actually it was a little bit more cleared some aid we were distributing yesterday on Easter, which we've rolled over to today, so we had lots of chocolates as well as tinned fish, bread, and the Ukrainian army very kindly lent us um, something which is like a removals van, which we were able to stock up with food, which is fantastic because it trebled, I'd say, the load we could have taken to Chernihiv, as well as another van which is driven by the local priest um, of St. Anastasia Church in Kiev. And it was great. We, the day was fantastic. Like, the people of Chernihiv are incredibly in need. The Russians devastated their local infrastructure, so they have no water, they have no heating, they have no electric. And Chernihiv is not a strategic position. It's a relatively small area, 20 kilometers from the Belarusian border, and Russian tanks and artillery came in and destroyed the lives of people who live quite simple lives. They don't have huge houses, you can see it's made out of wood, handmade. Um, they raise animals, they're farmers. They posed no threat to Russia, yet the Russians still decided to terrorize them. But they were unsuccessful in breaking their morale, which we saw today. And the day started off, um, we stopped up with lots of food from a Ukrainian supermarket. So this is a song about um, Turkish drones being used by the Ukrainians to kill Russian tanks called Bayraktar. We filled up three buses with the food and drove to Chernihiv across some pretty interesting roads. We actually had to stop at one point because there was gunfire around us, which was interesting. But once we arrived, the day went from strength to strength. Our, our first stop went, went very well, but unfortunately, uh, two of our vans got overwhelmed with people grabbing food, so we had to, had to leave food on the side of the road because they were so desperate. Um, so we left food food for them and moved on to a second location where we gave our food and people were more organized and went to two or three more locations before arriving at at the last town which we which we didn't have any contact at and after we arrived after about five minutes again we got swarmed by hundreds of people turning up wanting food people rode out on their bicycles from all around the area and the final location as it was fantastic we actually gave out all of our all of our personal food and water which we keep in the van to ensure the locals had everything because we ran out of the humanitarian aid we were giving out which is a job well done and like i say thanks to the team thanks to the ukrainian army and thanks to saint anastasia church for helping us everyone's a little bit tired now but we're on our way back to here so john tell us how you're feeling i'm a little, I'm a little upset young girl last night, and about the similar sort of age to my youngest daughter, and um, sat next to me on Google Translate, and she said that she was worried for her, for her and her family, and the Russians are coming, and she's sad that so many innocent people have died. It just, just hit home a little bit, you know, made me a bit homesick as well. Currently we're we're on our return journey, so we've been out for three weeks. We'll be home after a month tour away, and we'll be coming back again in another month. So our main aim now is to fundraise, and some of the work we've done over here is connect people up with different different groups in the UK who can sponsor them. So a big issue that there was before we came out was people from the UK were sending money over to Ukraine, and it was being misspent. People were, or people were just stealing it. What we've done now is find people who actually go out and give food or support to people directly in affected areas such as Butcher, Urban, Chernihiv, Kharkiv. In Kharkiv, for example, we found a group of 10 teachers who support around a thousand elderly people who are bedridden or severely ill. And we're now able to help, help connect them up with UK support, which is fantastic. Today we dropped off, we did deliver some targeted aid to some children with Down syndrome, which we've been doing the last couple of days to ensure that even though they're in Western Ukraine, which is 
relatively safe, they still are able to function as normal and can help manage those costs associated with having a child with a disability. Uh, so we help relieve pressure in terms of food and um, also some toys for the kids, which they were really happy to receive. It's pretty good. <laughs> Benton's strong. only little. Very strong. Muscles. Hello? You okay? Some Lego? Yeah? Is there anything else? Yeah, there's loads in there, mate. Yeah? You're welcome. Is there anything else? Better give them the tools, mate. The tools? Yeah. Look. 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 See that? Those ones, yeah. Which one? That, yeah, good man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>